better dead than red. That's my policy. Well, it just seems like Russia's everywhere. I can't believe it. We've got, we've got Russians coming out of the woodwork, I'll tell you. Well, something must be going right for them. Who knows? Maybe socialism does work. Well, you be the judge. All I know is they don't have MTV. Let's call them up and find out why. Guess what I've got? The magic phone. Let's call up Gorby and find out why they don't have any music television over there. Hello? Hello, is this Gorby? Hey, Gorby, you old goat. What are you doing, huh? Yeah, I'm looking at Time Magazine. You've got an, what are you, you got somebody at Time Magazine, you paying people to put linen on the cover or something? I mean, what's the story here? You're getting more publicity than, I don't even believe it. You get more publicity than Ronnie Reagan. I, I don't understand it. I'm going through this magazine. All it is, a day in the life of Russia? I mean, come on, who cares? Who cares, Gorby? I know, I would care if you had MTV over there. Why are you stopping the kids from watching MTV? I know some of the kids are watching MTV over there. It's the ones that have to sneak a satellite dish. Yeah, those are the ones. The ones that have to get a satellite dish covertly. I know they're watching me right now. But those are the only ones, Gorby, and I want to know when are you going to get MTV? What? What? I can't hear you, you're fading away. Yeah, I've got you on the magic bat phone. It's the red phone. What's that? You're, you're working on it. How long? About 20 years, huh? Okay, 20 years, huh? Well, hey, Gorby, I don't know if we can wait that long. Don't you think you could speed things up a little bit? Well, how's my apartment coming along there anyway? Remember five years ago, I wanted an apartment in Russia. You said you were going to work on it. You're working on that too, okay. And it'll take another 10 years before we have some steak dinners happening over there? Okay, well, I'll look forward to that too, okay? Well, look, Gorby, I gotta run, okay? I can't sit here yakking to you forever. It's costing a lot of money, but you work on the satellite feed for MTV in Russia, okay? Okay, great. Remember, kill a commie for mommy, okay? Great, nice talking to you. Bye-bye. Well, there you have it. I, I'm trying, I really am. I'm, if you're listening to us behind the Iron Curtain, I am really trying. Thank you. Hi, how's it going? Yeah. Um, you got that movie lined up for me? Great. Yeah. Uh-huh. You say I should be out in Hollywood when? Tomorrow? I can't make it, man. No, I'm working on MTV. It's... <laughs> well, stuff your 40 million friggin' movie. I don't give a damn. Look, MTV's more important, you got it? I've got people who want to rock and roll in Europe. You tell me, what's more important than that, huh? Well, stuff Hollywood and stuff the USA for that fact. I'll stay in Europe then. All right. What, you want me to throw my passport in the fire? I'll do it. Sure, stuff you too. Great. Well, there, there you have it. I've just stuffed a $40 million movie for my job here at MTV. Why? Because I want you to be entertained and I want to see who's going to win our contest. I wouldn't leave this desk for anything and I won't leave you. I'll see you next week. Have a good day. got the remedy they've got the cure it's cliff taylor here music music time hey 
Cure, there they are, my favorites. Hey, the Bee Gees back on top. And to pow. Don't forget, was not, was walk the dinosaur. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for a Brian Diamond concert production featuring that madman of comedy and music himself out here at the Miami Beach nudist colony, right here at the Tropicana. Let's have a hand for Cliff Taylor! Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. I'm overwhelmed and I'm so happy to be here at the Trocadero Miami Beach Nudist Colony. How are you? I hope you don't mind. I don't have any clothes on. Is it okay? If it's okay with you, it's okay with me. Let's take it away for the first number. My kind of town, Chicago is. My kind of town, Chicago is. All right, thank you very much. You make me feel so young. You make me feel like spring is sprung. Bells to be rung. <laughs> and everything that's old is new. You make me feel brand new. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Hey, did you hear one about the gay guy who came to London and he was disappointed because he found out Big Ben was a clock? <laughs> oh, I love it. Look, don't go to sleep. If you do, I swear to God, I'm going to take this guitar away. Stay up and watch this next video, okay? Take it away. Thank you. Oops. Oh, God, you're back. Oh, I barely got that guitar down there in time. Hey, we've got a lot more lot more music, a lot more jokes, a lot more everything. Should I take it away with another song for you? You want to hear some more music? Okay, let's go. You're just too marvelous, too marvelous for words like glorious notorious and just plain old laborious you're just too marvelous but not in webster's dictionary you're just old plain too marvelous too marvelous for words mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well i'm just so happy to be here tonight i I wonder, can you all take your clothes off too out there in TV land so I can feel more comfortable? Come on, take your clothes off, okay? Just like me right now, all right? If you haven't got a guitar, don't worry about it, but take your clothes off, okay? Take your clothes off and watch this next video. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 21st century boy, that's me. In the 21st century, no clothes. Sigu, Sigu, Sputnik. Aren't they great? I chose that one especially for you because this is a wild and crazy night. Those guys are wild and crazy. Look, don't go to sleep tonight. I promise you a show like you've never seen on MTV ever. We've got contests. We've got prizes. We're here at the Trocadero Nudist Club in Miami Beach. Come on, tell me. We've spent some money to fly me out here to Miami. Don't go to sleep on this one. Come on, watch this, okay? We'll be right back. Stay up for the next segment.
Good evening, Cliff Taylor here. And there's no place I'd rather be than right here at home with you. We've got Michael Jackson, bad, 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 and Mick Jagger jogging for the rest of his life. We've got Billy Idol, moaning, 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 and George Michael, faith. You're traveling through another dimension, a dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind, a wondrous land of both shadow and substance and things and ideas you just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Oh boy. Cliff Taylor in Hollywood. Roll the graphics, ladies. That's it. Cliff Taylor in Hollywood. You know, I usually reserve this spot. Thank you, that's enough, girls. Thank you, girls. Thank you. I usually reserve this spot for some of my favorite favorites of favorites in Hollywood. And one of my favorite people is a man named Rod Serling. Now, Rod had a show called The Twilight Zone in the early 60s. Rod was a very evocative, socially conscious writer who could not have artistic freedom because the advertisers like U.S. Steel were breathing down his neck every minute. So the only way he could have artistic, creative freedom was to do science fiction. And that's exactly what he did, thank God. And as a result, he did one of the most brilliant, wonderful shows on CBS in the early 60s called The Twilight Zone. Now, I feel it's my job to bring you, the Europeans of the world, some of the culture that's been happening back in Hollywood. And this is the real banana. If you can't get this on in your country, write your MP and ask them to bring you The Twilight Zone. We're going to be critiquing one of my favorite episodes right now. Can we get a close-up on this? I'll just hold it in the light. It's called, Will the Real Martian Please Stand Up? Take a look at that guy. How would you like to meet him serving you a cup of coffee at your favorite diner at three o'clock in the morning? That's right. Well, what happens is a busload of people, do we have enough time for this or should we go away for some videos and come back? Start it. All right, let's start it. Let's start it because Wintry February night, the present, order of events, a phone call from a frightened woman noting the arrival of an unidentified flying object and the checkout you're witnessing with two state troopers verifying the event, but with nothing more enlightening to add beyond evidence of some tracks leading across a highway to a diner. You've heard of trying to find a needle in a haystack? Well, stay with us now and you'll be part of an investigating team whose mission is not to find that proverbial needle. No, their task is even harder. They've got to find a Martian in a diner and in just a moment, you'll search with them because you've just landed in the twilight zone. Ga 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 that's what happens. And the people are just one too many. We're going to come right back to this story after you've had a few little enhancers from our video library. We're back. Don't think I would leave you without finishing that wonderful story. I'm sure you've been hanging on. Hey, you like dressing up as a woman? Then I'm sure you're going to love that last video. And my video pick is Marillion Incommunicado. <laughs> that is why I have chosen some heavy metal coming out of that last one. You figure it out. Anyway, guess what? Here we are, back to our story. Now you'll notice right here, if you can just come in on this, that that unusual gentleman there has three arms and three hands. And he's talking to the man at the diner. You remember him with the three eyes. I sort of gave the story away, but I didn't want to scare you to death. What happens is seven people were on a bus and they came to a diner where a UFO landed, but after they got in, 
There was one extra person. There was six and now there were seven. They knew one of them was a Martian, but who? Well, it turned out to be that guy, the guy with the three arms. And he sat down after the bus took off in a snowstorm and went into a river, along with a cop car and everyone in it. And as the man was sitting there at the diner, he said, why aren't you wet? And he said, what's wet? Wet, wet, wet. That'd be a good name for a band. And then he said, I think I kind of like these cigarettes and this coffee. In fact, we're going to love it here on planet Earth. This is just the kind of perfect place to start a colony. Well, as he found out from this guy here, he said, I'm sorry, but I think you're a little late because we here on Venus had the same idea years ago. And now we've decided to start a colony here too. So if you ever get out of here alive, I'm sure you'll agree that your party's been intercepted and killed. I'm sure you'll agree that we do differ. Gun, 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 gun. Take it away. Gun, 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 gun. something. I'm trying to figure out which guy do I like best, Cliff Taylor or Abdul Fizz? <laughs> I like Abdul. <laughs> you stupid. You know he's a big dummy. I tell you who's best. I am. And I'm wondering why they don't make me a BJ. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you something to you, big stupid dummy. You're too stupid, that's why. <laughs> well, how about some more music? Wake up and rock and roll! Yeah, because we got music, music, music! Don't turn the dial. Stay with us for Sisters of Mercy. Look at the grease and Five Star. Look at the steel and UB40. Look at the cactuses. Yeah, kiss Crazy Crazy Nights. around Trust me, I did it. <laughs>
Yeah! All right, the MTV Spider's back! Yeah! Cash if you die, and cash if you don't. Hello, my name is Cliff Taylor. I'm taking an unbelievable risk here by telling you about this offer. That's why I'm wearing the mask. Cash if you die, and cash if you don't. That's our offer here, because if you die, your relatives are gonna be enjoying an incredible amount of fantastic gifts here with a clock, cassette, alarm clock. They'll be grinding on your tombstone with our new portable tool kit, and can also take pictures at your funeral with our Hamanax camera outfit. Cash if you die and cash if you don't. Remember, that's our motto. I'm hoping you're enjoying my VJ picks, some good old heavy metal, right? And we'll be back after this. If you're tired and you want to sleep, forget it. Take an aspirin because we've got Aztec Camera. Woo! There's Aerosmith. They're going to burn on a guitar for you. And Pet Shop Boys. Let's sin. LL Cool J. I need love. Hit him up, move him out. Rolling, 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 rolling. Keep moving, moving, moving. Though they're disapproving, keep those doggies moving. Right. Don't try to understand them. Just rope and tie and brand them. Soon we'll be living high and dry. Rawhide calculating, Shh, my true love will be waiting. Be waiting at the end of my ride. Head em up, move em on, head em up, move em out. Head em up, move em out, rawhide. Ride em in, ride em out, ride em out, ride em in, ride em out. Ride em in, rawhide. Rollin', 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 rawhide. Rollin', rollin', rollin'. Life is idyllic here at Abdul's Used Camel Lot. I tell you, you couldn't have a better life than to be sold by good old Uncle Abdul. Hi, I'm one of the camels here at Abdul's Camel Lot. Well, and I'd like to say that I think Abdul Fez is one of the stupid, most moronic, idiotic people that I've ever run into in my life. He couldn't sell a camel to save his life. I've been here for 20 years. Like that time we were going across the desert and I was sick and I hadn't had any water for days and <laughs> Abdul and his British friend were together and they led me to a water hole and they put my face down in it and decided to try to use me as a straw. Abdul got on the rear side of me and started sucking and had the gall to say, nothing's coming out except mud. I'll tell you, he's pretty stupid, isn't he? Oh well, roll the graphic anyway for Abdul's used Camelot. He might sell one one of these days. Thank <laughs> you.
Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's really great to be back here with you again. Abdul Fez here at MTVE. You enjoying those videos we're rolling? I've been dusting off all the best ones I can find, and we've been getting the newest and the latest and the greatest. But let's just pause for a moment so that we can start to tell you a little bit about what's going on here in England. For instance, the exciting programming at BBC this week. Radio Times has one. This is the kind of thing you want to sit down and enjoy some popcorn with your grandma. Welcome to paradise. Hey, my family and other animals, BBC One's new Saturday cereal. Check them out. Aren't they great? And guess what? Ronnie Reagan's having some more plastic surgery. And this is the end result. I think they've done a pretty good job, don't you? Well, let's just keep right on rolling here because honest to God, I've got a lot of good stuff here. You know something? I've got a contest going and I want you to write in and let me know your answers to these questions. Now I'm gonna roll our address after this segment and on the whole evening we're gonna be rolling it. But I wanna get some pictures because I've decided to have a contest to ask you, who is Britain's most boring comic? Is it Noel Edmonds? Is it? Yeah, Jonathan Ross. Is it? Timmy Mallet? Is it? Let's get this. Is it Giles Brandwith? Or is it Jimmy Greasy? Hey, don't you love him? Okay, now if you live in England, you'll know who those people are. Write me a letter, please, and let me know what you think. Are those people the most boring people in the world, but which one is the most boring? All right, there's the address. Write to Abdul Fez, MTVE Europe, 40 Conduit Street, London, W1R9FB. Okay, great. Now, do we got any more time or should we break away for some music and come back for another segment? I think you need some more music, so let's break away and we'll be right back. Well, desireless, how was that, huh? Great. Hey, you know something? We've got a little contest going. I'm going to roll the address soon because we've been asking you who is Britain's most boringest presenter. I'm going to be showing you uh, a few things. I want to know who is Britain's most boring comic. I'm going to be showing you some things like that. I already know who Britain's most boringest politician is. That happens to be this individual. If you're living